Okay, in this video we're going to do a couple of exam questions um, and set it out like how, exactly how I would like you to if a question like this does get asked. Okay, so we've got a first order differential equation, finding the general solution, we're using the competency function plus particular integral technique. Okay, um, for the complementary function, we simplify our differential equation and let it equal zero on the right hand side. We could separate the variables for this, but we know that the complementary function is always going to be an exponential. So I would just say let y equal a e to the kx. Now if you want, you can differentiate this and sub it in and then take out common factors like we did in the last video. But you can skip straight to this step. If y is equal to a to the kx, that coefficient of dy by dx is what our k coefficient becomes. And the coefficient of y is what our constant becomes. So we could literally just skip from dy by dx plus y to k plus 1. For example, if it was 3 dy by dx minus 2y equals 0 at this point, that would give me 3k minus 2 equals 0. We'll see something similar in the next example. So you can literally just state that you know it's going to be an exponential. Skip to this step. k equals minus 1. So I know that my complementary function would be a e to the minus x. Okay. So once we've got our complementary function, we need our particular integral. And at this point, we need to look at the right hand side. And it, sometimes the particular interval will be given to you. If it's given to you, you just use it. But if it's not given to you, we've got to look carefully at the right hand side. There is like a little guide in the booklet for what different types of functions, uh, particular intervals we need to know. So we've got a function and its derivative, and the answer is a sine function. Now, for this to work, we're going to have to use some sine 2x's and sometimes people look at the right hand side and say oh there's sine 2x's I need some sine 2x's but it's not just sine 2x's because we've got the function and its derivative the derivative of sine 2x's is cos 2x's so the way that I think about the particular integral is I look at the right hand side and I think okay so what type of function and its derivatives would link with this right hand side and sines and cos's differentiate to each other so that's why we have to use those Okay, once we've decided what our particular integral is, before we can sub it into the equation, we just differentiate it because we need to sub in the dy by dx as well. Okay, differentiating, we should be good at this by now, guys. We go clockwise. So we multiply by the coefficient, so that'd be 2b cos 2x minus 2c sine 2x, let's substitute in, so we've got 2b cos 2x minus 2c sine 2x plus y which is b sine 2x plus c cos 2x and all of that is equal to just 1 sine 2x Okay, so that's a bit of a mess of an equation that we've ended up with, but like essentially there's a really key step that we can do now. Like we know that whatever's on the left hand side is exactly the same as whatever's on the right hand side, so we can just compare the terms. It's called equating coefficients. Like if I look at the sine two x terms, how many sine two x terms are there on the left? So we've got minus two c sine two x's, and we've got b sine two x's, and on the right we've got one sine 2 x's, so I know minus 2c plus b must be equal to 1, and we also need to equate the cos 2x terms, 2b plus c, how many are on the right, well there aren't any of them, so it's equal to 0, <coughs> so we can just solve simultaneously, we know c equals minus 2b, so minus 2c, which is minus 2b. 
plus b equals 1, 5b equals 1, b equals a fifth, therefore c equals minus 2 fifths. Okay, so we're, we're pretty much there. We've got our complementary function. We've figured out the values for our particular integral. So we just need to write our general solution. And remember, the general solution is just the complementary function plus the particular integral, and that will give you the full solution. Okay. So we've got our complementary function. <laughs> we've got our particular integral. And now, <coughs> notice I've never written like y equals or y equals. I always denote it as cf and pi. A common mistake that people make is if they write y equals, like later on in the question, if something else happens, you forget that the full solution is the combination of them both. So I would, only, at this point now, I will write y equals, because that is my full solution of the differential equation. So y would equal a is the minus x plus one fifth, sine two x minus two fifths, cos two x. It's your call, but you might want, if you want to check that this is a solution, like this is just the full solution to this differential equation, if you want to differentiate this and sub it back in, check that you actually get just sine 2x, which is what we want on the right hand side. Okay, example three, find general solution. We've got dy with x plus 2y, and on the right hand side we've got a polynomial, it's 4x minus 1. Okay, let's get our complementary function. Nice and quick once we've done a couple of these. Let write let y equal. That will justify the step, the shortcut that we're using. So I know it's going to be some sort of exponential function. And we're trying to solve dy over the x plus 2y would equal zero. So you can differentiate and sub in, but you can just skip and say, well, I know that that would lead to once it's let me come factors out, k plus two would equal zero, k equals minus two. So I have got ycf a e to the minus two x. For my particular integral, let's take a close look at what's on the right hand side. And maybe pause and have a think for a second. So we've got a function, well, two times by a function, and it's derivative, and the answer's some x's and a constant. Now, if we've got some x's and a constant, we're going to need, pretty straightforward, some x's and a constant, because when I differentiate x's, I get a constant. So x's and constants give me x's and constants. I wouldn't need an x squared because there's no x squared on the right hand side and obviously if you did include some x squared those x squared would be two times by x squared and you'd see them on the right hand side so they, they can't be there okay just one thing to note right if the right hand side for this question say for example if that would have equaled x squared plus three <coughs> thinking about the right hand side when it's a polynomial right if you've got x squared plus three you would let y equal you'd need some x squared, but you'd also need some x's because the derivative of x squared would give you x's and you would need a constant. So whenever you get a polynomial, look at what the highest power is and then just include all those terms, lower than that and including that term. Okay. So once we've decided what our particular integral is, we just differentiate it so that we can use it. So the y by the x would equal b. Let's substitute in, so b plus 2, bx plus c equals 4x minus 1. And let's equate the terms on both sides. So let's equate the constants. We've got b plus 2. You might want to expand this out while you get used to this. Just be very careful at this step. Like a lot of, when we get into the second orders, a lot of marks are like, people just bleed marks at this point because like, there's a, it's quite, you've got to be very particular in the way you set your work out and um, just be very careful when you equate your coefficients because like one or two little errors here would have like a massive impact on your answer. This could potentially be a 12 mark question like once we get stuck into this later in the year. So just be careful with your work in each step. So we've got b plus 2c and constants on the right hand side minus 1. Let's equate the x terms. So 2bx's and 4x's. So we know b equals 2. Sub that back in. Okay. 
that would give me c equals minus 3 over 2. Okay, so we're basically done. We've got our complementary function. We figured out our particular integral. Let's just tidy this up. Okay, so y is equal to y cf plus y pi. That would give me my general solution for this one. a e to the minus 2x plus 2x minus 3 over 2. Okay, got one more example in this video. Something slightly different happens on this one. Um, so it's definitely worth staying on for this one. Okay, so the last one, um, we've got 2 dy over the x minus 8y equals 5 e to the 4x. Find the general solution. So for the complementary function, let's let y equal some sort of exponential and simplify our differential equation. Dy over the x minus 8y, we just set it equal to 0. That would lead straight away to, therefore, 2k minus 8 equals 0, k equals 4. So our complementary function is a e to the 4x. Okay, this is where this one gets a little bit different then, because like, let's look at the right hand side, which we've ignored up until this point. But for my particular end school, what a lot of people would now do, and it's, it's, you know, you can see why a lot of people would say let y equal some east of 4x's. Because you look at the right hand side and you say, well, you know, for the particular end school, we're looking for something which gives me the full solution on the right hand side. And we've got east of 4x's, so we must have, you know, our solution must contain east of 4x's. But, like, the problem with that is, imagine if you did that. Say if we used east of 4x, you could maybe pause and try, see what happens. You'll soon see that it doesn't work, but you, I'm not going to go through it. If you tried that, it would just not work at all, but have a go. Um, the reason why is there's a little bit, something a little bit deeper going on here. Like, if you did use east of 4x's, and east of 4x's, guess what your answer would be? Like, you would just say, oh, my general solution is some east of 4x's plus some more east of 4x's. What's the point in you doing that? Like, you could just have some east of 4x's, which is, which is not true. Okay, that doesn't work. Okay? So when this happens, if, or if this happens, we have to use Essentially, when the complementary function is already contained within the right-hand side, for the particular integral, you have to multiply by x. So we have to use, instead of some east of 4x's, we've already got east of 4x's. So we have to use bx east of 4x's. And you want to highlight that in your notes, guys. You need to remember to multiply that for your particular integral. When you look at the right-hand side, if you've already got it, you need to multiply by x. And you've got to be very careful here as well, because if, if, even if people remember that, they still go wrong. Like it, once we've realised that we need to use bx east of four x's, do you have the x? Clearly, we have to now use the product rule because we've got two functions of x multiplied together. Okay, um, we've done a lot of these now. I'm just going to write the answer down. So if if, if we're going to use the product rule, that's u, that's v. So it would be bx. So u times by the derivative of this, which would be four east of four. Plus, now we differentiate this one, so if we differentiate bx, we just get b and leave the other one alone. Okay, so once we've got our function and our derivative to find our particular integral, we can substitute it in. So 2 dy by dx would be 2 lots of 4b x e to the 4x plus b e to the 4x minus 8y, which is bx, east of 4x, and that's equal to 5, east of 4x. The great thing about this, although it's a little bit more complicated, you know if you've done it right at this point, because essentially looking at the right hand side, you're only expecting to get some east of 4x's, and look what happens, we've got 8bx east of 4x minus 8, 
the axes, the forks, and they should always cancel because they're not visible on the right hand side. Like you, you, you wouldn't have known they were there, would you? But they, they were there in the solution. It's just that they've cancelled each other out. And you, that's great, they did cancel each other out. So then we can just compare these to the four axes on both sides. So we've got 2b east of 4x equal 5 east of 4x, therefore 2b must equal 5. b would equal 5 over 2. Okay, so we're basically done. We've got our complementary function. We've just figured out our particular integral. So our general solution would be y equals <coughs> a east of 4x plus bx which is 5 over 2 <coughs> x is the 4x okay fairly abstract but technique this isn't it but we're going to be doing a lot over it in the next couple of weeks um, and once you've practiced it it's honestly not that bad guys okay maybe go back and watch the, a couple of the examples again if you're not feeling 100 confident um but you are now ready for the exercise there's only one exercise in this booklet Okay, remember that we're doing the two booklets over the course of two weeks, um, and there's there's a lot more when we get onto the second order differential equations. So you try and get through this fairly quick, and then give you enough time to do the second order ones over the next two weeks. And obviously, keep an eye out for the work solutions, um, and let me know if you need any help, guys. Thank you.